Now that we have an understanding of what ADA is and some best practices around being involved in crypto, it's time to get started by purchasing our first ADA coins. In this lesson, we'll go into how to purchase crypto with Coinbase as well as other popular order book style exchanges. We'll go into limit and market orders and some best practices when using centralized exchanges. So jumping right into it, we are taking a look here at the computer and I've got my Coinbase account pulled up. So to start, if you haven't already signed up with Coinbase, be sure to check out the link down in the description below. If you use that link to sign up for Coinbase, when you buy $100 worth of crypto, you and I can both earn $10 in crypto absolutely free. So once you have your Coinbase account set up, essentially you'll go through the process of creating a username, creating a password, you know, you'll put in your tax information, and then you'll be able to go ahead and link your bank account. Uh, what we'll see here, so I'm gonna click on home, just giving you an overview very briefly of the Coinbase website. So you've got a uh, homepage which shows you your balance. It shows you any assets which you have favorited on your watch list. You've got some top movers here for percentage gains on the day. And then we can click on my assets and it's gonna give you an overview of what assets you currently hold within your Coinbase account. In this case, I don't really have much on here. I wanted to show you the process today of buying assets. So I've already linked my bank account. You will need to do that as you go through the setup process. Next, we've got trade. This is where if you're going to be trading assets using Coinbase, you can do that. You've got the simple as well as the advanced options. Now, one thing to note about Coinbase is that the fees are typically higher than if you were to use, let's say, another order book style exchange, like what we're gonna be talking about in the second half of this video. So that's something to keep in mind. Coinbase is typically what I would recommend for somebody who just wants something which they can link to their bank account. It's an easy on and off ramp. They just wanna press a couple buttons, buy crypto, and then either put it on their Ledger hardware wallet or their other crypto wallet and then just set it and forget it. But as far as being able to minimize the fees, we're gonna take a look at another exchange in the second half of this video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. One thing that is really cool about Coinbase is that they do have an earn feature. So let's say if you wanted to learn more about any one of these specific assets which are featured on the Coinbase platform, when you click on earn, you can go through any of these different assets which they have here and you can actually get paid in crypto. So it shows you your different rewards payouts. I mean, it's a pretty cool platform that they've created. Even on their homepage, they've got different articles which you can go and see news about any of these relevant cryptos. Uh, so it's just a cool website, you know, play around with it, learn a little bit more. You can earn crypto in different ways, such as clicking on that link down in the description when you first get signed up. And then of course, you've got the learning rewards as well. You can just watch these videos and they've got all sorts of different content. Next, you've got Web3, which is something new that they have, which basically gives you a breakdown of different dApps within various blockchain ecosystems. In this case, we're seeing ones for Ethereum. Next is card. So you've got the Coinbase card. It's actually a Visa debit card, which allows you to use your crypto to purchase things like groceries or gas. Uh, so making crypto a little bit more usable for uh, everyday use cases. But essentially that's what we have here just as a breakdown. Uh, you're also able to set up recurring buys on Coinbase. So if you wanted to simply dollar cost average using this platform, you can set it and forget it. Really cool stuff. You've also got NFTs and you can set that up using the platform as well. So once you've gotten the Coinbase platform set up, you've got everything linked to your bank account, we need to go ahead and purchase some coins. In this case, we're gonna be showing how to purchase ADA then going through the process of withdrawing the ADA from the exchange and then transferring it to a wallet. And then we'll also talk a little bit about some risks associated with using these exchanges. So what we need to do is go ahead and click on buy and sell at the top. Now, as we're going through this, I am just going to talk about some of those points which we had mentioned. As far as withdrawing, we're gonna go through that next process here in just a moment. Essentially, we're gonna click on send and receive. But to buy, we can see a breakdown of what we're looking at. We've got a one-time purchase and we've got certain dollar amounts which we're able to purchase by default. So you've got 10, 50, 100, and we can of course change that if we'd like. In this case, I want to buy Cardano. So it's listed here as ADA, so we can type in ADA and then we can see it's gonna pay with our bank account. In this case, I've got my Chase Bank linked up, ready to go. Uh, let's just go ahead and purchase 10 bucks for the purpose of this video. So we can see a breakdown of our order preview when we go to 
buy the ADA. We've got 26 ADA paying with the bank account which you've selected. This is the purchase price per ADA, the purchase amount, which is $9, and that fee. Again, going back to the fees, you know, it's a dollar if you were to buy $10 worth of crypto, but it does go up exponentially as you increase that dollar amount in uh, terms of the value of the assets. So Coinbase is one of those platforms which I recommend for people who want an easy on and off ramp for crypto, not necessarily the best in terms of fees. So we're gonna look at that here in just a sec. We're gonna click on buy now, this looks good. If you did want to set up a weekly recurring buy, you know, you can do that. You just gotta to toggle this feature. Not doing that this time around. I've just gotta do a one-time purchase here today. So we're gonna click on buy now. And it's very easy. I think Coinbase has a very, very seamless user experience as well as the user interface. I really like the platform. So let's go ahead and click on done. And then what we'll see is that order is going to process. If we click on my assets, we can see now that my balance has adjusted to account for that ADA, which we just purchased. So it might take a second for it to show, but uh, we should see that pop up here in just a moment. Um, give it a second here. If we need to, we can just refresh it. Let's see if it pops up. There it is. Okay. So Cardano ADA, we can see our portfolio balance. Now we have about $9 worth of ADA. So in terms of being able to use Coinbase to get the crypto off of the exchange, you know, you can do a couple things, right? Let's say you have some assets and you want to go ahead and sell it. It's a very similar process to going and buying. I would simply click on sell. In this case, choose the asset which you would like to sell. I'm not gonna sell in this case, just showing you how to do it. You can select the dollar amount. In this case, if I were to click on sell all, this is going to auto generate how much in terms of ADA I have to sell, give, giving us the price in terms of the value of the ADA, an order preview more or less of what it is that we're gonna be expecting. Total payout's about $8. So again, you're paying that dollar fee every time you make a transaction on Coinbase. That's pretty much the process to buy and sell on Coinbase. Very, very simple user experience. We can also convert different assets. Let's say you wanted Bitcoin, but you have USDC, or let's say you have Bitcoin and you wanted to transfer that into ADA. You can simply toggle between the different assets that they have available. You can choose what assets you have in your portfolio and then select which you'd like to swap for. So Coinbase is really great for just a really simple user experience. Now, let's say you wanted to send assets to a different wallet or you wanted to receive some assets from a wallet that you have. Let's say you needed to send some crypto that you were holding to be able to transfer it to your bank account. So in that case, you would click on receive and it's gonna generate a public address. In this case, you would simply just copy this address to the clipboard, use the wallet which you have your assets on to send to this address, very simple to go through that and then send. In this case, we would select the amount which we'd like to send and then we would copy that address here where it says to. You can also leave a little remark and then just click on continue. Uh, luckily, there's no fee to be able to send and receive. It's simply when you buy and sell, you will have to pay attention to that fee that Coinbase is gonna charge you. So that's a very brief overview of Coinbase. Definitely a cool platform. One of the platforms that I recommend the most as it comes to uh, being able to buy and sell crypto very easily. It's a great onboarding and off ramp for new users, especially. But now let's say you wanted to take a look at an exchange that gives you a little bit more flexibility and also is a little bit better in terms of fees. Well, one of the crypto exchanges, which I recommend, I've been using it for quite a while and there's so many different ones out there. Uh, is KuCoin. So KuCoin is also a very simple user experience, which is why I do recommend it. It's It's got different features like margin trading and uh, derivatives trading, and you've got earn programs as well and NFTs. I'm not into all that as far as what I'm showing you here in this video. It's basically just buying and selling and then how to withdraw the funds after you've purchased it. But in this case, what we have here is KuCoin. So KuCoin.com, again, I will be sure to leave the links. So all the websites which we're talking about here today in this video, be sure to check out the description. Those are the official links. It's very important that you do pay attention to. Here, we're gonna discuss some of the risks associated with these exchanges. Making sure that you are using the correct links 
for any of these different wallets, exchanges, etc. There are definitely things like phishing attacks and phishing attempts, which we'll see, especially in crypto. Uh, so you have to pay attention that you are using the correct links with any of these exchanges. Check out KuCoin.com. Another very popular one that I would recommend is Binance.us. Binance.us, one of the things you'll have to pay attention to is whether or not they're actually supported within your state if you live in the US. Otherwise, if you're internationally based, Binance.com, you'll be able to use that exchange. It's another very popular exchange globally. Um, and you've got different platforms like Nexo, which is another good one. There's the concern about lending and borrowing platforms, which I won't necessarily get into this course, but there are videos on my YouTube channel, which I would recommend you check out where you can learn about some different platforms like Nexo, not endorsing any of these platforms, simply just giving you a list of ones to check out. And then as far as other exchanges, you know, you've got ones like Kraken, Gemini, a bunch of different exchanges which support ADA. Once you have your exchange set up, you'll have to go through the process again of filling out your information, creating an account, username, password, Google two-factor authentication, all that good stuff, making sure you simply follow the process to get the exchange account set up. And then once you have that available, you'll be able to see an overview of your account. You can click on uh, your main account. So like, let's say if you've got different assets, you can select that and see those here. In this case, I've got a few ADA in my trading account specifically for me to show you the process of being able to buy and sell on this exchange. I've got different things like trading bots where you can set up APIs for different trading bot platforms platforms such as three commas, you know, there's so many different things you can do with this. But today, for the sake of this video, let's go through the process of taking a look at the order book. So when we go to KuCoin or any other platform very similar to this, you can use any exchange like Binance or Gemini or Kraken, uh, you're going to select your trading pair in this case, ADA, and we can select trade for USDT, a very popular trading pair. USDT is USD Tether. Then you can type in your trading password. So what we see here once we enter in the trading dashboard is we've got a really nice chart that gives us some different time frames for the price action. You can go really short in terms of the time frame if you're trying to uh, trade this on a daily basis, or you can make it a little bit longer of a time frame if you wanted something a little bit more long term. Let's say you're an investor type who really just wants to make a nice buy order and then take it off the exchange and then just set it and forget it, staking your ADA to a pool. So you've got some flexibility here. You can use these different tools as well to do certain things like Fibonacci retracements, and then you've got different lines which you can draw. So really nice chart here on KuCoin, which is another reason that I do like this platform. And then if we take a look at the right side, we've got the order book. Uh, so the order book is something really cool to look at, and I'll briefly go over what we're seeing here. Now you've got the buy side and the sell side of an order book. And the red numbers here show the sell orders priced in USDT. And then the green shows the buy orders priced in USDT. And we can see the price here. You got those orders moving uh, pretty quick, which shows that this market is quite liquid. As we can see, we've got orders being filled almost every second. Uh, next to that, we've got the amount in ADA, which the order is for, and then the total amount of ADA for that given volume. Now, what we have is this number right here in the middle. This is the current market price of this asset or this trading pair. Uh, so in terms of USD, ADA USDT, it's 0 0.336135. That's the current market price. Now, let's say, for instance, I wanted to go ahead and place an order. There's two different types of orders which are very important to understand. So we've got a limit order as well as a market order. A market order is very simple in the sense that the market is going to execute at the best price, whether you're trying to buy or sell. This is done automatically. Typically, it's going to be more or less this number we see here in the middle. It could be a little bit more, a little bit less, just depending on the current market price and the volume which is available. Now, limit order gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of the price for which you would like to buy or sell. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to place a limit order because I'm expecting the price of the asset to go down. What I can do by placing a limit order is I can set a specific price as well as the amount of which I'd like to purchase for that price. And if the market does come down to that level, that's when that order will be triggered and I'll be able to purchase that amount of ADA. Uh, so limit orders gives you a little bit more flexibility in the sense where you can actually set the price which you'd like to buy it for. 
So we're gonna go through that process here. Uh, market is very simple. Again, you just click on market. It gives you the best market price you can either buy or sell. In this case, I have ADA and I would wanna sell it for USDT. So I can click on 100% and it would select the full amount of the assets which I had in my portfolio. If I clicked on 50, 25, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go to limit and I wanna go ahead and sell say 50% of the assets which I hold but then I wanna set the price. Let's say I want to sell three, three, and we can see by taking a look at the order book, we can see that the sell price is just slightly above what is currently the current market price. So, you know, people are trying to make a little bit when they try and sell their ADA. Now, of course, the liquidity of this market is, is very good. There's a lot of orders being placed. We set it for say six, seven, eight, one, something like that we can see current price is six seven three five so you know eight one is pretty good considering where we are at let's say if i go ahead and hit sell and we can see here with this red arrow our order has been placed we've set it just slightly above the current market price um, and as the price fluctuates we'll see that arrow change its position but more or less it's going to be in that general area and then we can see the information here related to our open order down at the bottom it shows us the timestamp the trading pair the type whether it's a limit or market order buy or sell the price of the asset and the quantity and then we'll see here filled and unfilled uh, once this does actually trigger so this is pretty much an overview of KuCoin, Coinbase. You know, you can buy, sell, you can do a whole bunch of different things using these centralized exchanges. Now, as far as being able to withdraw on this platform, so while we wait for this order to fill, if it doesn't fill, no big deal. I essentially just wanted to show you the process. What we would need to do then is go to our main account. As we can see here, I've got a little bit of ADA on this exchange so I can show you how to go through the process of doing some of the things in this course. Essentially, we'll click on withdraw. Now, it's always a best practice as we talk about some of the things wrapping up this lesson that whatever assets that you hold on a centralized exchange, like let's say Coinbase or KuCoin for this instance, that you're not holding a large majority of your portfolio. Essentially what you have on these exchanges should be just for liquidity purposes. Let's say if you wanted to place a buy order, if the price were to go down, hypothetically speaking, or let's say you wanted to take some profits, this isn't your entire basket of assets you know this is just a small portion which gives you a little bit extra liquidity that's something to just keep in mind you know you don't want to have a whole lot of assets on these platforms uh, but what you'll do to withdraw let's say if you wanted to send this crypto to your wallet you've made a successful buy order you got it at a great price you want to just go ahead and put it into your self-custody wallet stake it to a pool set it and forget it what we're going to do is select the asset and then we're gonna to have to enter in the wallet address. I'm gonna show you in the next lesson how to go through the process of choosing a wallet. We'll go through the process of setting up a wallet. Make sure you stay tuned for those future lessons. We're gonna enter in that wallet address. It's simply copy and paste, then select network. And we're going to make sure that we're choosing the correct network. We're going to choose the Cardano network. Again, it's a very small fee in comparison to what we saw with Coinbase. You know, one ADA currently is about 33 cents. Not bad considering on Coinbase, we were looking at about a dollar just to be able to purchase some assets. So it's a big difference there in terms of the fees, something to pay attention to. Once you enter in the wallet address, choose the correct network. It's gonna ask you to verify a code sent to your email, as well as if you do have Google two-factor authentication, getting that two-factor code sent to the platform. Once you've went through and verified all the information is correct, you'll be able to hit withdraw and then send the funds to your self-custody wallet. So that is essentially the process of being able to use any of these different exchanges, whether it's Coinbase, whether it's KuCoin, Binance, Gemini, Kraken, you name it. There's a whole bunch of different platforms out there. It's always good to get up to speed and use best practices, which we've discussed in previous lessons, making sure that you're not holding a bunch of assets on these platforms, essentially just enough to be able to get the needed liquidity, whether it's to buy or sell, and then transferring those assets off to a self-custody wallet. All right, everyone. Well, I do hope that you found some value from this lesson. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. 
Another great way to help support the creation of this content is to delegate to Kaizen Stake Pools. Join us for our next episode of the Cardano 101 course, where we'll discuss several wallets that support ADA and how to transfer your funds from the exchange. I'll see you there. Thank you.